Welcome back to D20 Tactics. On this channel, I play Dungeons and Dragons with my friends, and we explore combat scenarios and play out the tactics used to defeat monsters quickly and safely, giving you more time to get back to roleplaying. I'm your host and Dungeon Master, Sarson Zero, and today I'm joined by Blind Oracle, Azure Wolf, Fear No Equal, and Merrick of War. Together we'll run through typical battles that adventurers might see playing Dungeons and Dragons. This is the third encounter of a demonic incursion, so if you missed the start, you can find a link to it in the description below. Grab your dice, draw your sword, and let's jump into combat. Hit points, ability, spells, items in hand. Plus two short bow, plus one arrows, 169 to 169 HP. 122 out of 122 HP, four first level slots, three second, three third, three fourth, one fifth, one eight. Full charges on my wand and my wand of the war mages in my head. 35 out of 50 hit points, three first level, three second, and three third, three fourth, one fifth. 161 out of 170, I am carrying the warhammer and the plus two shield. I have four level ones, one level two, three level three, two level fours, two fives, one seven, and one eight. 202 of 202 HP with a great axe plus two in hand. Action surge, second wind, and two indomitable still available. Carry over spells and allies. Potion of heroism. Ten more temp HP and bless running constantly. I still have a familiar and a simulacrum. The effects of aid and hero's feast. Monsters, abilities, items, and numbers. This encounter has six gremlin demons back here in the corner. They're sitting upon a throne. They're the ones that are controlling this operation. Guarding them, there are six vulture demons, gremlin demons. These have demonic resistances, cold, fire, lightning, non-magical attacks, immunity to poison, and they can turn invisible. They also have a fear effect. How do you guys feel about fear? Wah, wah, wah. Great. They have a claw attack as well that can do some poison. How do you guys feel about poison? We're very afraid of it. Great. No fear, no poison. No fear, no poison. Heroes feast. Vulture demons are demons, so they have demonic resistances, cold fire and lightning, non-magical attacks, immunity to poison. They have talons and beak attacks. They have a spore attack that can poison people, but you guys are all immune to poison. They also have a stunning screech they can use to stun non-demons in the area. It's a 20-foot radius. After that, we're going to go to the terrain and effects. Much like the previous encounter but a little bit more enclosed the yellow area is the ground moving past you so if you land in it you're going to move downward as the abyssal machine continues past if you for whatever reason land on the treads the treads are a dc 17 acrobatics check or else you fall prone and take 6d6 slashing damage what do you guys think for tactics in this fight all right hear me out lock the door with an immovable rod spirit guardians and force them to walk <laughs> into us the doors slide in and out yeah, sorry. On the one hand, this feels like a Spirit Guardians fight. On the other, those stunning screams are going to be a real pain for anyone who's trying to maintain concentration. Hey, yeah. I think we can just ignore the Quasits, though. They don't do very much meaningful damage, and I don't think they have any abilities that are going to impair us, so just, like, focus down the vultures. Six demon vultures. I do still think that Spirit Guardians should be used. It's just, you know, it's not going to last very long, but still throw it. You could almost do the same strategy here with what we did before. The problem there is the concentration. Either I can burn it another eight to get five of them to try to do five of them again then have the simulacrum pick up the slack on the last one and then just disappear if they all fail it's a good option one and then we can just rely on spirit guardians and trying to clear them out as fast as we can afterwards yeah and it's a lot easier for you to beat the concentration check if there's only one of them who's trying to do it so we're gonna go with try to burn the eighth level slot on these vultures i hate for that to be the answer every time but as an evoker you're doing a lot of elemental damage and everything we're going to go up against is resistant to it so like non-damaging spells are your best bet here. You're making good use of it. That's my plan, though. Let's throw down, then. Let's go come down to initiative. Anybody have higher than a 20? Anyone have between a 20 and a 15? 18 for the rogue. 16 for the wizard. 15 for the owl. Anyone have between a 15 and a 10? 13 on the fighter. I have an 8 on the vultures. And what do you got for me, cleric? I got a 2. Rogue, you're up first. This is awkward. Bonus action hide. Doing the math on moving through the cleric here. No, that's, that's way too much. No, 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 I'm sorry. I don't go places where there isn't a fighter standing in front of me. I think the actual answer here is we shoot the vulture demon to the southwest. Well, there's the crit. Can we down the vulture demon in one? Mm, no. I'm going to try. You can certainly try. You're just not going to do it. 70 points. After that is the wizard. I have to be in 60 feet of all of them, so perfect. Vanish. DC 18 charisma, please. Upper left gets a 9, so he is banished. Lower left gets a 15, so he is banished. Central right gets a 12, so he's banished. Lower right gets an 8, so he's banished. Upper right gets a 21, so he is not banished. What else for you? Moving back as far as I can, going to the upper level if need be. <laughs> 
after the wizard is a simulacrum. He's going to step in, use his final fifth level spell to try to hit both of those vultures. Banish. DC 18 charisma. Upper right is going to get a 16, so he gets banished. Single remaining vulture gets 21. Passes. Same thing, moving back, holding for a minute. Owl. Let's get the fighter advantage. After the owl, we go to the fighter. Dash to the vulture demon, and then action surge for attacks. First attack advantage. Crit. Sure, why not? 20 damage. Second attack. Crit miss. Third attack. Dirty 20 for 16 damage. 16 is lethal. And that's it for me. Cleric, you're up next. Move in front and cast Spiritual Guardian. Let's do that at fourth level. Rogue, you're up. This is one of those weird moments where I wish I had one of those weird AoE spells on a scroll. Come steal one from me. <laughs> Pickpocket the friendly wizard. Yeah, there we go. He's got a bunch of fireballs. Do you have fireball on a scroll? That's what I'm saying. Steal one from me. Yeah, okay. We're going to run up, steal a fireball scroll from the wizard, throw it down range. It is a DC 13 dexterity save against 8d6 damage. Not bad. 34 or 17. We got plus 3. We have magic resistance. We need a 10 on 2 dice. We could do this. I also resist fire. You do. If I fail, I take 17. If I pass, I take 8. All of these have 7 hit points. So they all pop. Let me give you your actual damage numbers, though. 8 and pop, 8 and pop, 8 and pop, 8 and pop. He's going to take 17 and drop 8 and pop. Kentucky Fried Quasit. Frank, I knew you were a wizard. Yeah, it would help if I remembered <laughs> their turn. Oh, well, that's an encounter. Disappointing one as it was. Report hit points. 169 out of 169 hit points with 10 temp HP remaining. 122 out of 122. 35 out of 50. 202 out of 202. That would be 161 out of 170. Any end of encounter actions? Keep holding banish. Stare blankly at each other. I was wondering how long we have between. More than a minute, less than 10 minutes, so your spell keeps going. With no one driving it and the adventurers unclear as to how to steer, the abyssal engine crashes into a river, hits a boat, and the adventurers are going to take the boat across to see what sort of demonic debauchery they can spot on the other side. Three encounters down, three more to go before the long rest. Thank you for stopping by, and I hope you'll join us next week as the adventure continues. I'm Saracen Zero, and I will see you next time.